Hi, this is Margo. This is Sunday afternoon, September the 13th, 2020. I hope everyone is doing as well as possible. Um, it's been a rough week all the way around. Um, I'm hanging in there, but you can hear my voice. It's it's not strong. I'm not able to speak very loudly. So, um, I'm just reacting to everything and the smoke and all of that. But, um, <coughs> we're going to... This is my weekly update for YouTube for methane and Arctic sea ice. And I have a subscribe star channel and the link is below if you'd like to check that out it's for my private members and I do daily videos over there showing updates on everything and posting things on the channel and um, we're able to communicate with each other and there are no trolls it's just a real nice little community and uh, you get an email every time I put up a new post you can message me and ask questions and there's a place for comments and stuff and um, it's, it's just a real nice little community so if you'd like to check that out and uh, want to know what's going on during the week then that's the place to go so that's my shameless plug and I'm not monetized on YouTube and so the only money I've received is from the uh, the subscribe star channel and whatever people want to send me through PayPal but um, it's not about the money it's about the message and that we are living in the end times and that I'm a watch person on the wall and I'm I'm showing evidence of the end times and we're getting closer and closer and closer day by day and my calling is taking these um, kind of scientific websites and kind of breaking them down and showing the data and and bringing bringing it to you on a regular basis and so um, we've got new methane data from CAMS they finally got caught up now remember last week they were they were late on releasing data when I did my show last Sunday they the latest data they had put up was from August 31st so we showed that and then the NOAA data was no good from Saturday so I had to use Friday data for my weekly update so it's been um, you know up and down this week with the data CAM started releasing new data on when was it Monday or Tuesday um, Monday and when they they start putting it out they'll leave it up for maybe an hour maybe a few hours and I was able to record every single day as it came up I didn't get a lot of sleep during that time but I was putting up little silent videos for my subscribe store members with the new data and um, so it's all over there and so far I've not seen that they've tweaked anything but you never know um, so we've got so they've got caught they're caught up on on releasing data so they're up to date so uh, on the NOAA data we've got yesterday's data and we've got sea ice that we're going to concentrate on and I've got one uh, one article I'm going to share today too. So um, let's get started. Here's the NOAA methane data from yesterday the 12th. This is the 477 slash 469 millibar reading. This is for the met one satellite in the morning. The mean or average was 1910 parts per billion. 
the height reading was 2416 and that's in this pink range uh, that's the high reading but the pink is between 2000 and whatever the high reading is parts per billion that's the pink and so we got a lot of pink over northern hemisphere <coughs> In the afternoon, the mean was 1911. The high reading was 2449. On the uh, two satellite in the morning, the mean was 1891, and the high reading was 2349. In the afternoon, the mean was 1891, and the high reading was 2393. So here's the spreadsheet and the chart that we're working from. Now I started tracking this first in March of 2019 so it's been about a year and a half and so um, I do have a year's worth of data from March 1st to March 1st of 2019 to 2020 and then we're in new territory this year. We have we are, we are up. We we left behind the high reading from 2019 long ago, so we're in no man's land. So here we are for September the 12th. On this cell, here are the mean numbers that I just called off, added up and divided by four, and we come up with an average of 1900.75 parts per billion. So that shows an increase over the week before of 2.5 parts per billion. So there's the line going up. So now we're up above this 1900 mark. And um, that's, you know, we're in no man's land. And um, so the change from uh, February 29th of this year to the 12th of September has been an increase of 24.25 parts per billion and change since March the 1st of 2019 has been an increase of 43.5. Now we're in the middle of the rise and typically it goes up until around mid-October and then it then it starts heading down for the winter so um, <clears throat> we'll see we'll see what happens now I want to show you what went on this week so here here was the data that I took from last week's report for the fourth um, and then on, on the 5th, there was incomplete data, and I showed that, that because uh, Noah was a day behind, you know, the actual day, they report a day behind. So that's why, that's why I used the data for the 4th. I showed that with the big white areas. And then there were two more days kind of like that I, I tracked the data and I put potential change but I didn't count it in my <coughs> actual daily change and weekly change over here because it was just too 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 wild and it was just it was just not complete it was just wide all over half half the globe so then um, so we were the last good day was 1898.25 and then on the 8th they started coming up with with data that was complete enough so on the 8th it was 1898 so it went down 0.25 on the 9th it was 1899 so it went up one part per billion 
On the 10th, it was 1898.75, so a slight decrease of 0.25. On the 11th, it was 1900, so that was an increase of 1.25. This is daily. And then on the 12th, it was 19.75, so that was another increase of 0.75. So since the 4th, it's gone up. 2.5 parts per billion, so in a week and a day. Now this year, um, it really started going up around the first part of February, and so since February the 8th, it's gone up 37.5 parts per billion. So that's insane. We are, we're in runaway methane increase. And this is serious no man's land, and um, you know it's as a result of of um, it's all these feedback loops that have that are that are taking place, and there's a lot of methane, high methane readings from the wildfires around the planet, especially on the west coast of the U.S. Um, the Arctic sea ice is very, very in very poor state. So, and a lot of the Arctic Ocean has been ice free this summer, and so it's absorbed a lot more heat, and so we're seeing more methane coming up around the coastlines and stuff. And um, it's just. Um, it's not a good situation, but um, we we knew this was coming. We knew this was coming, and so we need to prepare ourselves physically for however however long we think we we might be here or might be able to be here. But more importantly, we need to pre prepare ourselves spiritually for leaving the planet and that's a process it's not something that happens overnight it's it's um it's a process so this is another reason i'm doing these shows to help people to realize how close we are and that that we need to let go of of everything here because it's it's beyond what we can do and um, so now let's look at um, the CAMS methane data. They put up Sunday, but we're going to be looking at Saturday to correlate with the NOAA data so we can get a good comparison. So we've got Saturday the 12th up. Here's the Arctic view, and here's surface level. So there's the color ledger down below. So this is where it left off on Friday, and we're seeing, uh, we, we were seeing earlier this week high releases coming out from Russia and this Norwegian area, and up through the Barents Sea, and then coming out through the Kara Sea, and it's still been spewing up here by Severinize Emilia. This has been going on since January of this year. It hasn't stopped and it's getting worse. We have more coming up here and now it's um, coming up in the Laptev Sea and you'll see it moving out across the East Siberia Sea and over the East Siberia Arctic Shelf it's going to be moving into the oranges and the red colors and remember this is the area where Natalia Shakova did her research and was saying that the sediments were just so filled with methane that, that um, it, we could easily have the methane bomb go off just any time. But in reality, there are high methane stores all, all around in the Arctic, 
in the Baffin Bay, um, in, in the Yama Peninsula, there are a lot of articles have come out with the, you know, the, the new, the new craters that are opening up and stuff, and you're going to see, well, let's just run this, I could go on and on. <coughs> So the data is for Saturday, and the forecast runs Sunday through Wednesday. So we're seeing these high, high releases all around this Russia, all through Russia, and see it coming out from the coastlines. And um, this is the Latev Sea over here. This is the Kara Sea. This is the Barents Sea, or Barents. Everybody has a different pronunciation depending on what part of the world you come from. I come from Texas, so I've got my own pronunciation. So, um, it's popping off in Iceland again. <coughs> See, it's spreading out across here. And the sea ice is, it's only Com coming around like this. That's about all, all of the sea ice. There's not much left. Now, um, traditionally, the, the, the end of the melt season is around September 20th, which is a week from today, traditionally, but we'll see. It could keep melting because of the uh, warm waters and it's melting from below and um, that that these these waters are so so much hotter than normal it's going to take time for them to cool down even as the sun goes down up there so there's that <coughs> Now we'll look at the North Pole view. Here's the Persian Gulf. It's it's um, spilling over. It's really coming up heavy on the land here in Saudi Arabia. See that? Here's India. Here's China and Asia. This is Korea. Here's Japan. And then this is Russia all the way across here. Europe is filling back up. There's a, a lot. You can see it's just filling up with very high methane readings from Germany down. Here's the UK. Here's Ireland. And <coughs> we're going to take a, a close-up look at North America in a second. So here's North America. Now there are fires kind of all across the country. They're they're primarily on the west coast. Um, 
but there are there are fires burning in West Texas as well and this is a big oil oil region where these fires are burning and um, so we're seeing some very high readings in areas we normally don't see in. See, we normally don't see it this high up in Oregon and, and coming down through through California and over here over into Reno where I live normally we're not in the black but but we are now um, before we go on I want to show we'll come back to this I promise I forgot to show the smoke this is the smoke right now. This is from Zoom Earth. And I've got the fires, the fire layer turned on too. Wow, look, here's a here's a path of clear where you can breathe. But um here's California, here's the fires. Here's Oregon up here and here's Washington and um, and we can see the smoke it's going all the way across um, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas all the way across the United States and up and then that's from the southern part and then from the northern part it's going all the way across and and then look at all these fires in Idaho Montana's breaking out um, Utah's breaking out Wyoming Colorado has had some awful fires and um, but look at Texas you can't see can't hardly see it because of the clouds. We may have to look at NASA Worldview to see the fires here. But um, that's what we've got. We're covered up. And the smoke is different than the smoke in South America. And, you know, South America has a lot of fires there because they're chopping down the rainforest and they're burning it. And s But the smoke is different down here. See the fires, all the red dots? The smoke is different down there than it is up here. I don't know why. Um... I know they're dropping a lot of flame retardant in these fires up here in the US and that will put a red tinge to it but additionally we've got magma rising and if there's magma involved and oil wells catching on fire and propane tanks catching on fire and things then you've got it's a whole different toxic mix plus all the structures that are burning and it's a, it's a bad bad mix it's toxic air see I'm right on the edge of the thickest I'm right here so so I'm I'm suffering, but I'm not in the thickest part, thank God, and I know there are people suffering more than I am, but um, I'm still here, and we'll keep reporting, God willing, and bringing, bringing my updates to everyone. So, um, 
let's move on. We'll look at the global view now. And you would think there would be more methane coming up in South America where the fires are, but there's just not. It just, I don't know why. It's a different, different kind of fire. And the same in Africa. They've got a bunch of fires that are always burning in the Congo. It's like it's a constant thing. But, um... The methane in Africa looks a lot less than this year than it did last year. You know, it could be the algorithms changed in January and when they brought everything back online, I don't know. So we've got this light blue um, throughout most of the southern hemisphere, which is 1820 parts per billion. The darker blue is 1800 parts per billion. Now the NOAA data, I'm tracking that at about 500 HPA. So that's a different, different reading than surface level. And um, so it's about halfway up in the atmosphere. We're still seeing it come up here around the coastline of the Antarctic. Now the sun is the sun is up or coming up down there. A lot of the Antarctic is in the sunlight and um, is very visible on NASA World View. But until we get done with this Arctic sea ice melt, I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be focusing that much on the Antarctic. I just I only have so much energy. I have to choose what I focus on. Here's 500 HPA. Uh, okay, I will refresh this so we can get the color ledger. They still didn't fix this. See, that's 2360 is the high from 1950 to 2360. So, it's, this is the worst part. China and Asia, China here and India. Then we've got reds over the Arctic. And see, so we've got the dark green um, to the bottom of the, of the picture. Here's total column, and I will refresh it so we can get the correct color ledger for that. So the <coughs> the highest reading, this I call it black. It's dark reddish brown between 1920 and 2320 parts per billion. So from India all the way over east. And we have some high readings in North America because of the wildfires as well. So let's move on. I'm going to go through my slideshow. Here's carbon monoxide from today. This is from CAMS. 
this is for North America, this is from all the fires, and this is where it takes, you know, it's carbon monoxide, you can't breathe. It takes oxygen out of the atmosphere, so that's not good. It's covering up a whole big area. This is formaldehyde today, and uh, this white area where it's higher than what they can register, that's in Oregon, but this is all the way up the west coast. This is methane at 850 HPA, so it's, it's um, just above surface level between surface level and 500 HPA and we can see the sources, the ground sources of the high readings where it's just coming up, coming on up and it's from those fires and here in West Texas and so on. This is surface level methane for today <coughs> or yesterday sorry and that one before was yesterday this is total column so we can see the reds coming up total column here in Oregon in California and it's rare when we see reds in the United States or North America. Normally it's like a green or or yellow. The orangey color is normally the highest we see. Occasionally we'll see some reds. This is nitrogen dioxide and we can see it spreading out all the way across North America is now we're getting into some higher readings the red up here in the northeastern part of the country but we can see the reds where it's highest this is surface level ozone for today and this is the bad ozone. This is from pollution, forest fires, things like that. And this, this is, um, there it is. It makes it hard to breathe. This is what makes, uh, makes the air like a unhealthy. This is one of the things they measure when they index the, the air as to unhealthy or whatever. Here's the Arctic view. We're looking at the smoke from the wildfires. This is Russia, so they're still burning a little bit and some up here, but not like over here in North America. Here's North America with the smoke. Again, look, look at the high readings, how high it is with the smoke. It's, um, it's, I've never seen it this bad, seriously. And it's been four weeks now that I've had to keep my windows closed and the air conditioner going. It's not going 24-7. It, I've got it on, um, uh, on the thermostat and it comes on and goes off, comes on and goes off. This is the global view of the smoke from, from the fire. So here's South America, here's Africa. But it, like I said, it's different kind of smoke. It's just a different, different. And you see this smoke coming across Europe? That's the smoke from, from here, from the United States that's gone across the Atlantic. Here's total aerosols. That's why you can't breathe. If you have allergies, that's why. Here's the ozone hole over the Antarctic today. It's very serious. We see this black line. Inside this black line 
is um, is the danger zone and the this purple blue is 200 to 220 Dobson units this blue is um, once 175 to 200 Dobson units this navy blue is 150 to 175 Dobson units so it's quite thin and it's covered up the whole Antarctica and over the ocean and gone, gone way out and um, it's a good thing the sun's coming up down there so that so that that hole can close up a little bit but this is the end of their winter so this is when it's the coldest and so that's when the the ozone will be at the thinnest here's the Arctic now we have thin ozone up here too we see the green and that's under normal the the solid yellow is 300 Dobson units that's considered normal or average and so the next color down is this yellow green and then this this chartreuse green and then the blue green and then it goes aqua and then it goes into the danger zone but this is over most of the Arctic and you can see the um, mo a lot of the North America is in the green we've all even got uh, the blue green over here in in uh, Washington there Here's the global view of ozone. A lot of green. That's uh, we're we're losing the ozone layer, <coughs> and that keeps in the atmosphere. If that goes, then uh, we won't have long at all. This is sulfur dioxide from today. Here it is at 500 HPA. Now here's North America, sulfur dioxide. Total column, we can see the highest readings again from California all the way up. This is at 500 HPA, so it's gone up to the halfway up in the atmosphere and is being caught up in the jet stream now. This is at 850 HPA which is closer to the ground and we can see that where it's coming up from the surface the highest readings. So that's where the source is. We've got some down here in Mexico too. Now I'll show you the earthquakes. I took these pictures this morning. There were 321 worldwide. And we've got some larger ones down here in Indonesia and in the South Pacific. These are fives. There was a 6.1 up here off the coast of Japan. Um, Russia had some earthquakes that I'll show you. Uh, this is rare that we see earthquakes r reported in Russia. Now we know they have earthquakes, but a lot of times they're not reported. <coughs> this is Southern California, Cyril's Valley Ridgecrest area. There were 44 here today. In the lower 48, there were 220. Now we can see the Pacific Northwest is quiet. Uh, the Yellowstone area is quiet today. The only one here is this 3.1 at Stanley, Idaho. And um, one here, this is at Odessa, Texas. And then here's at Ridgely, Tennessee. And then we've got them the usual places here for coming up through California. 
This is western Nevada. This is the Tonopah region all the way over to Mammoth Lakes. We're seeing 77 here today. So I'm showing the the only earthquake here for the Pacific Northwest in Yellowstone is this 3.2. I said 3.1. It's the 3.2 at Stanley at 3.52 this morning. Here we're looking at from Texas east and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven earthquakes. We got more than that, I think. But um, this here is the 1.9 near Odessa, Texas. That's oil drilling capital of the world, practically. And then here at Marysville, Tennessee, was a 2.5. And the rest of them were in Oklahoma. Twos and under. Alaska had 56 today, with the largest one being this 4.1 near Valdez. Here are the Russian earthquakes. There were four. There was one, uh, this one off the coast of Kamchatka. This was a 4.3. And then there were two here off of um, this island, U Uglagorsk, Uglagorsk, a 5.0 and a 4.6. And then on land, there was a 4.4 at Kurum Khan. So these are Arctic earthquakes. <coughs> Here in the South Pacific, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six in this view. Now New Zealand had one on land of 4.1 near Tokoroa. However you say that. I probably butchered that. Um, then we had uh, Kermadec Islands had a 5 something, oh, 5.1. Papua New Guinea <coughs> had a 5.1. This is a, uh, what's this one? A 5.2 at Timor. And then these are 4.9s. Here is the one on land, the 4.1 at Tokoro, Tokoro, Tokoroa, New Zealand, 198 kilometers deep. That was pretty deep. So uh, the deeper it is, the less damage it makes on the surface. The less shaking there is on the surface. Here we're looking at two earthquakes. We've got a 4.6 in in the Arabian Sea, right on the red line at the Carlsberg Ridge, and we've got a 4.5 in Iran. And that's all my pictures. Now let's move on. Time for sea ice. <coughs> Here's sea ice. It's no cover for climate reanalyzer from today. And um, there were a couple of days they didn't update their some of their data. So it's just spreading out here. It's not really refreezing. This is where it's melting. <coughs> And dispersing, so it's not really refreezing yet, but they're counting that as um, they're probably counting that as extent. On NASA Worldview, they show this ice free right in here. So, this is what it looks like today on this model. Now, we'll go back <coughs> to last Sunday. Like I said, uh, 
you know, they they didn't update a couple of the days. So here's where we were last Sunday with the sea ice. Here's what it looked like. So there was a little bit more here in the Beaufort Sea. Here was Sunday. Here was Monday. Tuesday. Here's Wednesday. Thursday and then Sunday. So they didn't update Friday or Saturday. Here's the US Navy sea ice thickness model for today. <coughs> the dark purple is about one meter thick, which is three feet approximately. Um, so where you where it goes lighter it's it's thinner so gets into half a meter and then down to a little skim the dark blue is about 1.25 meters thick aqua the bright aqua is about two meters thick but we can see we're losing what's left of the aqua that was the thickest sea ice and here we are today it's melting in a really it's got a really jagged appearance where uh, it's just coming apart and pulling apart and it's also flowing out through this Canadian archipelago you can see it flowing here and here and here and out into the Beaufort Sea now it's still showing a little skim here in the Beaufort Sea, but like I said on the uh, NASA Worldview, it's showing this part here empty that with the little tail disintegrating over here. <coughs> now we're seeing the sea ice kind of being pushed back up towards the coastline on Greenland and on Canada there's not as much space between the coast and where the ice edge is now and the the waves and the wind is they're pushing pushing everything back up it's not refreezing really though it's um it's still melting it's slowed down but it's still melting <coughs> Here's the 30-day animation, again from the Navy. It forecasts out to a week from today to the 20th, and the data starts on the August the 22nd. So let's zoom in and see what we can see here. Well, you can see the movement of this ice, this ice mass, where it's shifting down and spreading out, and and um, it's still we're losing ice. You can see it flowing out through this tributary, and through here, and down into the Beaufort here. <coughs> And the edge is still retreating and coming in and still thinner at the edges. So here we are at the last day of the model, the 20th. It's still showing um, some, some th faint sea eyes here on eastern Greenland. I thought it would be gone, but it's still showing up a little bit here on the coastline. And um, it's showing a little bit of aqua here around the coastline of Greenland and here at Ellesmere. And it's showing just a little hint of yellow, which is a little bit thicker here 
near the Canadian coastline. But it's it's still breaking up real bad. So we'll see for what it looks like next week. <clears throat> but I don't think we're at the end of the melt season. I think we're going to go on probably into early to mid October considering how how warm all these oceans are and all the open water that's been here for months on end and it's just been absorbing heat radiation from the sun and it's just and it's just and hot water up from the Atlantic and from the Pacific and and we've got the the water coming up under the sea ice and melting it from below so um, it's I think we're gonna have a longer melt season we saw it continue into early October last year I mean that's what it looked like to me so <clears throat> Let's move on. So here's sea ice and snow, uh, National Snow and Ice Data Center, and they have no data for us today. Um, this is their daily, no data. We'll, we'll refresh this and make sure they didn't put something up. They've got monthly sea ice extent. The, for August um, but <clears throat> but we're not looking at August we're trying to look at daily data and they have no data for the 12th for extent and no data for concentration so we got to go with our other models <clears throat> Here's their graph for Arctic sea ice extent. This is this is not current. This is only up to like the end of August, and so it's still showing that we're above September. This the blue line is this year. The dotted line is September is uh, 2012. So they're still showing that we're above 2012, and that was the minimum in recorded history but um, there are other sources that show we're at or below 2012 right now so I don't know I don't know how much to how much stock to put in these people um, here's the Greenland ice sheet today and um, Again, no data for the 12th. They've got it for the 11th, and they're not showing any melting here. Here, um, here are the cumulative melt days for the year. We've got high melting here on this western edge and up on this northeast edge all the way around. Here's their chart for melt extent for this year. The red is this year uh, 2020 melt percentage and it's gone down to uh, to the to the median for starting in September. But it had been a lot. It's been melting exponentially. So there's that. Now let's look at this um, NASA worldview. This is going to be a long show. I'm sorry it can't be helped. We just have a lot of data to go through. Let's refresh again. Okay, we've got everything. This is for today. So I'm turning on the blue marble layer to take away the clouds. And so here's Greenland, here's the North Pole, here's Canada, here's Alaska, here's Russia all up here. 
Now this, all of this area has been ice free for months and months and months. And this is where the sea surface temperatures are much warmer than normal. <clears throat> this is where we're seeing that methane coming up to. Um, we're still seeing disintegration here above Greenland in the sea ice is still coming apart on this northeast edge and on this northern ear it looks like that's kind of breaking off and disintegrating so I don't know if all that's gonna break off before before the end of the melt season when it gets into the blues it's um it's it's it goes away pretty quickly and then down here here's the tail and you see there's there's no fringe of ice in between the tail and the main part over here so this this model is showing up differently than than the other models <clears throat> but it's not very well put together and it's coming apart and it's just pieces that they're that they're showing. We are seeing melt in, in see the reds that's showing the melting. Um, the thickest sea ice is right across here. Right up in here. It's huddling up. Hanging on for dear life. But it's flowing out and it's spreading out and moving down. And um, <clears throat> that's what we've got. So let's go back to the 6th. This is where we were last Sunday on my report. So I'm just going to click through and we can see what's happened. So we had a lot heavier melting. Now the melting is slowed down. There's a lot colder air up in the Arctic now. And so that's slowing down the melt. It hasn't stopped it, but it's slowing it down. So here's the 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. And here's today. So we can see this tail has really, really gone down. And this ear is is really deteriorating here. So it could be that we're pretty much left with an area like this. This kind of half moon just above. Th here's the North Pole. So just above. That would be, that's at um, 83 degrees north latitude where my pointer is. 83.67. It could be that's kind of what we're left with. With just remnants outside of it. And it will be thinning out some more here by Greenland. hard to say <clears throat> but that's what we've got right now now we'll take a peek and see if oh before we do this let's look at climate reanalyzer this will help us with looking at the storms um, here's maximum temperatures for today we can see the colder air um, over a lot colder air on the interior of Greenland. This purple is like minus 30 degrees Celsius and then it's down into the blues and um, so and it's so this is below freezing. This is air temperature all around here and um, then it's coming up into the greens just above that. So a lot of the Arctic is still in the green, so it's still above freezing.
here's the global view. I'm really going to concentrate on the Arctic because we only have so much time. So here we have 2 meter temperature anomaly for today. We've got mainly tans and browns over the Arctic. Now we do have some blue where the colder air is so that's a little bit cooler than normal. So like I said that's keeping it from melting as fast where we've got the cooler air. Greenland has some purples so it's getting down to 15 to 20 degrees colder than normal on the interior and um, that here uh, uh, along the Siberia coastline we've got browns and moving into the reddish browns so we've got 10 to 15 degrees warmer than normal along up there. <coughs> now we will look at North America here where these fires are that's in the browns now and see this this cold air is still coming down from Canada all the way down through the middle of the United States and um, it's it's gonna ruin a bunch of crops seriously it's not good um, so we've got the Arctic is up 2.2 C higher than normal the northern hemisphere is up 1 C higher than normal. The world is up 0.4 C. Now um, the, their baseline is 1979 to 2000 for the baseline. And people have asked about this and I put a link below and this and that. You can do your own research and it says why they use the ba this baseline they say um, here here's the information about two meter temperature refers to air <coughs> temperature at two meters above the surface two meter temperature anomaly refers to the departure of the current day's forecasted temperature from a long term mean for the same day of the year the anomalies here are based on a 1979 to 2000 reference climatology derived from the NCEP climate forecast system reanalysis CFSR and they got a link this 22 year baseline is used instead of the more common 1981 to 2010 climate normal because 1979 to 2000 represents conditions prior to rapid arctic warming and sea ice loss. A comparison of different climate baselines against the historical temperature record is shown here. So, you know, I don't want any flack about the baseline. This is what it is. We know that we're in trouble and we, we are over the 2C we're over 2C from pre-industrial. We hit that in March. So anyway, it's all different models, so just accept it. Here's um, precipitation and clouds for today. We see, we're seeing rain and snow. Uh, here's the North Pole, so we got some snow over the North Pole and some rain coming in. And it's snowing over here in the Beaufort Sea. We've had some low pressure systems moving around up here. <clears throat> Here's two meter wind speed. This is in knots. And um, so this dark blue, that's about 18 knots. And so um, the area that we're really concerned about is right here where the thickest sea ice is and it's not too bad right there. Sea level pressure we've got all these lows moving around up here it just depends on you know whether they move over here or down here um, and it's very unpredictable up there. <coughs> when we think it's going to do one thing then it does something else and they've they put they changed their page and it's hard to read some of these numbers 
so um, you can look at it for yourself and see what you think it is now here's a change that they did this week and I was taken um, I was uh, taken off guard by it this is the jet stream map 250 HPA wind speed and um, mean surface level pressure so barometric pressure so we can see our highs and lows here and along with the jet stream they changed this while um, while NOAA was messed up and CAMS was just now bringing their stuff back online and then then they then uh, Climate Reanalyzer revamps this whole page and so what they what they did was on the old page used to be blue on the background and this color ledger used to only go up to 165 knots but now we've got a white background which I kind of like because the, you can see the colors a lot better so you can see the jet stream how it goes in the Arctic where it's kind of weak and broken up and they increased the high range to tw 220 and up so they increased it to encompass higher 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 wind speeds so I guess this is in anticipation or because of the uh, more severe storms that we're seeing but you have to rethink because like this this um, golden color is 140 knots and the red is 160 and that used to be the highest reading on the old scale so it's not anymore so there's that so here's our jet stream and it's broken up and wavy and just strange looking and here's our lows I can see that that's 990 millibars this is 987 here's a high pressure system 1016 so it just depends on how how things go we already saw sea ice and snow cover from today there it is let's see if they've updated now see they're not good about updating sea surface temperature anomaly I don't know if they just don't have the data or if it's a different different layers of stuff that they put in this is the latest that they have up from Wednesday the 9th and so we can see around most of the sea ice is in the browns up into the red and the pink in this open water um, and it goes up to 6C higher than normal and maybe higher that's what it measures when it gets that whitish pinky color and um, here in the Baffin Bay around Greenland it's still really high and we can see the North Atlantic is in the reds North Pacific is in the reds and browns globally sea surface temperatures are awful they're awful causing lots of problems so northern hemisphere north Atlantic and north Pacific are all up 0.9 C higher than normal worldwide we're up 0.5 C okay there's that now let's go back and see what we can see with sea ice so here's here's our concentration turn that layer off and see 
see if we can peek through some of these clouds. So we've got some clouds here, system here. So here's Greenland. So here's where the ice has pushed back up to the coastline. It's still broken up. It hasn't refrozen in between the the pieces of ice. So this is the area that is still disintegrating <coughs> and still coming apart here. Now here's a big cloud. There's a hole over here on this northeast edge. Can't really see it that well, but we can see that there's uh, like here's the pieces of ice with the white blobs looking through the cloud there. So moving on over to the west here we're just going to follow this coastline. Here's Ellesmere Island and you can see now the sun is at an angle it's going down so that's why we get the brightness and we're, we're going to get some shadows depending on where where the sun is some shadows from the clouds here's that middle night ice sheet that was that broke out see it's still opened up Now it's been snowing, so what you're looking at is snow on the land at <coughs> and you've got snow on the ice pieces as well. So it's highly reflective, it's really white. You might see snow on some of the mushy ice. See a lot of open water there. <coughs> Here's the ice, big cracks. So now we're at the end of Canada. Looks like. <coughs> Wait, are we? No, we're not. I'm getting lost. Um, oh, we were up there. North of Ellesmere Island. Okay, it's easy to get lost up here. Now we we'll keep going west. Okay. Here we're seeing more landscape of sea ice. And the ice is rough. The old ice is rough and doesn't have a real smooth surface. It's jagged and and um, can stick up. Here's clouds. We can see the ice edge here. <coughs> through the clouds. Here's here's the coastline. So the thickest sea ice is is huddled up right right along here underneath those clouds that we can't really get a good picture of. Here's some. This is some of it here. <coughs> here's the edge, and there's a cloud over it, but here's the ice edge. 
See, it's really breaking up and moving out fast. Where's the tail? I'm following the tail. There it is. And it's underneath a big cloud. So it goes from here all the way down here. But it's only pieces. Really. Uh-oh. I wanted to just close that up. We can't see the tail. See, it's too cloudy. Here are more cracks. Let's see. Here's open water. You can see the cracks going all the way. We're almost at the North Pole. There's some more cracks. It gets blurrier as we get to the North Pole. So, cracks here. That's at 89.1 North Latitude. See, it gets weird when the sun is going down. The clouds look weird and it's hard to tell what layer is what. There's shadows from the clouds there. So, here's some ice. Here's the edge. So it's very flimsy. You can see it through the clouds there. So, there's that. So all along this Russian coastline, that's where the methane is coming up. Here is Severnaya Zemlya. <coughs> Right down here in this area is where it's, that rift has opened up. I'm thinking in the seafloor, um, where it's just coming up continuously since January, just spewing up. Here is the Yamal Peninsula, and that's where the, the latest crater, the famous crater, Everybody's been doing stories about in an unknown location on the Yamal. They don't want a whole bunch of people going up there. Here's Novaya Zemlya. <coughs> and so on. So, there's that. Now, I would like to share a blog post from Seymour Rocks, Robin .com. He put this up yesterday and it's a combination of information and he says data fraud and weakening of cold halocline layer in Arctic exposes sea ice to oceanic heat. So he's combining a, a few different things here. <coughs> And he did a video, so you can watch his video about what uh, about the Arctic ice turns to mush. This is from um, from the Polar Stern people on the Mosaic. In March, soon after arriving aboard the Polar Stern, a German icebreaker frozen into Arctic sea ice. Jennifer Hutchings watched as ice broke up around the ship weeks earlier than expected, even as scientists on the research crew scrambled to keep field instruments from plunging into the ocean, Hutchings, who studies ice deformation at Oregon State University, Corvallis, couldn't suppress a thrill at seeing the crack up, as if she had spotted a rare bird. I got to observe firsthand what I studied." Unquote.
<clears throat> then um, there's some dispute about the Bremen Arctic sea ice extent uh, graph. Paul Beckwith, this is a tweet from Paul Beckwith. I guess it's a tweet, um, or it might be on Facebook. I'm I'm on Twitter. I'm not on Facebook. It says, Arctic sea ice extent, Bre Bremen <coughs> adjusts their graph for 2020 to match NSIDC and JAXA. Seems very shady and dubious to me. Why? <coughs> the first photo is from the 10th on the Bremen, and it's showing sea ice extent for the Arctic. <coughs> the red line is this year. The black line is from 2012 and it's showing the red line just dipping down past the black line. <coughs> Here's a or tying with it and maybe going a tiny bit below on September 10th. Then he looked at it again. Here's the website, ceice.uni-bremen.de, so people can go there and look for themselves. They changed it, and now all of a sudden it's hopped up. It's not nearly as so bad as 2012. See, it's way up. And then, um, <coughs> this is from Paul Beckwith. He did a series of videos that I've been watching. They're very good about uh, the melting of the sea of the ice. Not uh, he he covers Greenland, and he covers the Arctic, and they've been very good talking about the exponential melt and why and goes into all the different ramifications and um, so he says how low will the big arctic ocean slushy go we will find out very soon in this third of a new series of arctic sea ice demise videos I continue to chat about the demise of the big slushy in the arctic ocean that's from Paul Beckwith <coughs> He says, I discuss in detail the recent peer-reviewed scientific papers on how Atlantic water, dense warmer water, a couple hundred, hundred of meters below the sea ice has moved to within 80 meters of the bottom of the sea ice in the eastern Euro basin and will likely keep the ocean from freezing up there in the winter. The heat in their Atlantic water is enough to completely melt out the entire Arctic Ocean ice three or four times over as it eventually makes it near the surface over the entire basin. So that means that the ice is going to keep melting. He says this already happens in the Barents Sea region and spreading eastward into the rest of the Arctic. I'm also discussing how the so-called chimneys where the Arctic Ocean water descends to complete the AMOC, the Arctic Merid Meridional Overturning Circulation, how this process is being disrupted by Atlantification, thereby weakening the thermohaline process, leading us closer to a complete shut-off and then redistribution of global ocean circulation patterns. 2020 is continuing to be full of unpleasant surprises for the teeming masses of humanity on Earth. So he's got Paul's uh, video there. And um, weakening of the cold ha halo clean layer in the Arctic exposes sea ice to oceanic heat in eastern Arctic Ocean. And then there's another article. This is from the Mosaic. Growing underwater heat blob speeds demise of Arctic sea ice. And um, 
from Science Magazine and so forth. So they're talking about the Barents Sea and where the, the heat from the ocean is coming up here and then spreading out here so that in the winter time it doesn't refreeze. We saw just a little bit of refreezing on this east side of Novaya Zemlya. We didn't see any refreezing here in the Barents Sea this year at, or like this last winter up there and um, and then um, not much refreezing here in the Kara Sea. This melted really quickly and there's and it's going to be uh, and it's moving up, up eastward so this whole this whole coastline is what they're talking about won't refreeze so more methane and they're saying that that it's warm enough this water is warm enough that as it keeps spreading out it's going to melt this arctic ice it can melt it three or four times over so the ice doesn't have a chance it really doesn't <clears throat> so this is goes on and on then here's a paper um, here's the abstract and about that and so on and so forth so I will leave the link below for that and we have come to the end of the show I, I will wrap up with reading out of the Bible I'm covering the Old Testament prophets we're on Amos this week I did Joel. I've done this week. I did Joel and started on Amos. So now we're on Amos chapter 5. <clears throat> Hear ye this word which I take up against you, even a lamentation, O house of Israel. The virgin of Israel is fallen, she shall no more rise she is forsaken upon her land there is none to raise her up for thus saith the Lord God the city that went out by a thousand shall lead by an hundred and that which went forth by an hundred shall lead by ten to the house of Israel for thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel Seek ye me, and ye shall live, but seek not Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal, and pass not to Beersheba. But Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to naught. Seek the Lord, and ye shall live, lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph, and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel. Ye who turn judgment to wormwood, and leave off righteousness in the earth, seek him that maketh the seven stars and Orion, and turneth the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name, that strengtheneth the spoiled against the strong, so that the spoiled shall come up against the fortress. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. Forasmuch therefore as your treading is upon the poor, and ye take from him burdens of wheat, ye have built houses of hewn stone, but ye shall not dwell in them. Ye have planted pleasant vineyards, but she, ye shall not drink wine of them. For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just. They take a bribe and they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. Therefore the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil 
that ye may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Hate the evil, and love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. <coughs> Therefore the Lord, the God of hosts, the Lord saith thus, Wailing shall be in all streets, and they shall say in all the highways, Alas, alas, and they shall call the husbandmen to mourning, and such as are skillful of lamentation to wailing. And in all vineyards shall be wailing, for I will pass through thee, saith the Lord. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord! To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light, as if a man did flee from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall, and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light? even very dark, and no brightness in it. I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Neither will I regard the peace offerings of your fat beasts. Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs, for I will not hear the melody of thy veals. But let judgment run down as waters, and righteousness as a mighty stream. Have ye offered unto me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness forty years, O house of Israel? But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Chiun, your images, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves. Therefore will I cause you to go into to captivity beyond Damascus, saith the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. Amos chapter 5 So time is short, and I do believe we are in the end times, and that Jesus is coming very soon. And we all need to be ready. So, if you haven't gotten right with God and Jesus, I recommend you do it now. I'm praying for everyone. So until next time, God bless you. Go in peace. I love you all. And I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.